good morning good afternoon good evening students welcome to ramesh academy so <clears throat> in the previous lecture we have studied uh, about what are how the profits are distributed in the form of dividend to the shareholder i hope that you have revised uh, that chapter along with all the concepts it's a very important chapter maybe case study based questions and straight away theory questions can come for examinations point of view coming to accounts and auditors chapter chapter number 9 please open your handwritten notes second Please write down chapter number chapter nine accounts and audits. See what happened is the financials. What are all the financials relating to your balance sheet? profit and loss or maybe your cash flow of the company yes three of the financial statements they are compiled and financial statements are formed now this financial statement compliance is what so you the companies need to comply with submitting the financial statement quarterly or annually quarterly is always an audited financial statements and whenever you are giving an annual financials you will always give an audited financials yes so quarterly financial statements are applicable when whenever your company is listed listed in the stock exchanges in that case quarterly financials are submitted and it uh, quarterly financials are not applicable to the companies which are not listed in the stock exchanges means which are unlisted public companies or which are which are normal private companies in that case they will only submit the annual financial statements yes so what happens is the annual statements annual financial statements when you are submitting there is a form which is called aoc4 this form is relating to submission of your annual financial statements yes so a lot this is the annual form in that form what are the attachments that are required your annual financials means uh, financials covering what financials here we have dealt with three things for example the balance sheet of the company the profit and loss statement of the company or the cash flow of the company so three things are covered in your financials these financials are affixed or attached with this annual form so please uh, write down this thing this is an annual form annual form is the aoc4 which is filed annually by the company and three of the things are attached with the form your annual financial statements which includes your balance sheet your pnl and your cash flow please write down this please write down this so these financial statements your audited financial statements are affixed or are attached with your this thing aoc4 forms okay now one more 
more thing we have read in the previous classes was the board's report. Yes. So board report is that report which is also submitted online along with the this form. So board's report may what are the board's responsibility? How many meetings of the board members were conducted? How many? Uh, how much gap between the meetings were there? Frequency of the directors, those who were present and those who were absent. Everything is written in the board's report. You come to know about in the part B, in the deep. Fine. So please write down this thing for annual financial statement, AOC four. Finances are attached. And the board report is attached. So, what are supposingly in your chapter called charges? All the forms were, uh, what was the form starting CHG? Debentures, different, uh, different forms were there. For financial statements, the, the form will be AOC. Okay, AOC is the starting series of the form, maybe AOC 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 may come the your annual form of financial statements. Yes. Okay. So let's begin with the chapter. Please open your modules. Chapter number 9 accounts and audits now. This is an important chapter. For the case study based questions are less to come from this chapter. But yes. Straight away theory based questions are definitely it can come from this chapter. Okay, so beginning with <coughs> books of accounts. All business establishment and companies are required to rec keep a record of their day to day business and financial transactions in order to know the result of their operations. So, whenever they want to know the result of their operation, it is mandatory that you record each and every transaction, maybe your profitable transaction or your the transactions which, uh, which uh, for which the losses are incurred. You have to record all the transactions, yes. The same record is to be books of accounts. For operation annual accounts, maintenance of proper book of account is must. So, section 180.28 of Companies Act contain the provision of the book of accounts to be kept by the company. So, what is book of account? Book of account means records maintained in respect of what? Your sum of money received, sale and purchases of goods and services, assets and liabilities and item of cost. Everything is covered in book of account. Now, what is financial statement? Financial statement means balance sheet, P&L, cash flow statement, changes in equity statement, any explanatory store notes. So, whenever you will see a balance sheet, the assets and liability, a balance sheet, P&L, cash flow statement, statement of changes in equity. When your share capital is changed, that will for also form the part of the balance sheet or maybe an explanatory statement whereby you will refer uh, in the balance sheet you you will see that suppose this is an assets and assets ke aage you have seen this note number two so these notes are also a part of a balance sheet now what is a financial year in relation to the company means a period ending on 31st March every year. So whenever your year ends according to uh, companies act the financial year means 31st March ending and whenever they uh, if a company is incorporated on or after 
1st of January, the period ending on 31st March, the following year, in respect of therefore, financial statement of the company is made, right? So, uh, for follow, uh, suppose your company has been incorporated in the month of January, in that case, your financial year will end on 31st March of the next year. This is how your <coughs> financial year means. Provided where a company which is a holding or a subsidiary or associate company and is required to follow different financial year, CG on an application by the body cooperate allow the period as its financial year or that the period is a. So means whenever you want to change your financial year according to your company policy, suppose your company is incorporated outside India, for the book closure you do not want to end your financial year on 31st of March, in that case you will write a application to CG. Provided further any application as on the date shall be disposed by tribunal uh, with the provisions after the commencement. So, this, are, uh, this is up, upon the uh, change of the financial year. Yes. Now, requirement of keeping book of account section number 1828. Every company shall prepare and keep in its registered office book of account or relevant books and papers for every financial year. So, section number 128 says you have to keep the book of accounts at your registered office. Book of account must be kept on accurate basis and according to the double entry system of accounting. So, section 1828 says and it must be prepared and kept at registered office of the company for every financial year. Book of account must give true and fair state of affairs of the company. So, your book of accounts will always form, uh, give a true and fair view of your company business. It should be kept at registered office of the company and also the they, it will form an accurate basis and a double entry system, a system of accounting. Yes. So, place of keeping books of account section 128 says that every company to prepare and keep a books of account and other papers and financial statement at its where registered office of the company. However, all the books and books of accounts may be kept at other place as board. If board says no, other book and accounts will be kept in the branch office. Then in that case, you can keep if all the board members approve it. When the board so decides, the company is required within seven days of suggestion to file with ROC a notice in writing. So, whenever you want to change your place where the book of accounts is kept, you will give an intimation when to the ROC, write down here, where books of account place is other than RO, registered office. So, here in an illustration is there, ABC Limited is having its branch office in Jodhpur, Udaipur and Bhivari. Is maintenance of books required at its branch offices? As per section 1828, every branch office should maintain proper books of account. Proper summarized return periodically are to be sent by the branch office to the company at its registered office. So, whatever books and accounts each and every branch office is having, their books of account needs to be compiled and sent to your registered office. Next is maintenance of books of account in electronical form. Now, it provides manner in which books of account needs to be kept. Important provisions are maintenance of books of account in electronical mode is always permitted. Yes, electronical mode is permitted. So, what happened is for financial year commencement, commencing on or after 1st of April 2023, every company which uses accounting software you are using for maintaining your book of account shall use such accounting software which has feature of recording of what audit trial of each and trans uh, edit uh, of every transaction creating an edit log for each changes in the books of account along with the date and 
ensuring that a audit trail cannot be disabled so whenever you are accounting software is you have from now from the 1st of april 2023 what happened is every company which is using an accounting software to record its books of account shall use the feature of audit trail for each and every transaction and also will use a edit what edit a log for each and every change and also which will enable as a feature that when the date it will it will enable to enter date when the change was made the information kept in the records shall be retained completely in the format in which they were generally what generally generated sent or received and the information contained shall be complete and unaltered so it shall be complete and unaltered information received from branch offices shall not be altered shall be kept originally which is received for from the branches information in electronic mode shall be capable of being displayed in the eligible form there will be proper system for storage retrieval what display print out of electronic modes as the audit committee or the board may deemed what deemed appropriate and the records shall not be disposed or rendered unusable which is unusable unless it is permitted by law the company shall intimate to register on annual basis at the time of finalizing filing the financial statements i have said aoc4 the name of the service provider inter internet protocol location of the service provider where the books and accounts and papers are maintained on cloud such address of the service provider so these all informations whenever you are maintaining the books of accounts in electronic mode these all your information needs to be given to the roc on the annual basis where the service provider is located outside india name address of the person in the control of book and account in and other books and papers in india so what are the main uh, things that maintenance can be in electronic mode and accounting software when you are using for maintaining your book of account such you should have that feature of recording the audit trail for each and every transaction then the information should be very complete and unaltered and the information which is received from your branch offices should cannot be altered by the registered address and there should be a proper system of the storage retrieval display print out of the electronic uh this thing uh, <clears throat> records and the company shall intimate to register on annual basis of such information points we have discussed yes so the book of accounts in respect of the branch office section 128 says that the branches of the company if any in india or outside shall also keep a book of account for the transaction affected at the branch office book of account and other book and papers maintained by the company shall be open for inspection at a registered office in a what in india inspection in respect of subsidiary of the company shall be done only on by the person authorized in this we have by the board of director where the inspection is inspection is made officer and other employees shall give a give to the person making the inspection assistance in connect uh, in connection with the inspection so further proper summarized return of book of account kept and maintained outside india shall be sent to the registered office at quarterly interval which shall be kept and maintained at the registered office of the company so what is it book of accounts uh, of the branch offices whether your branch is located in india or outside india you have to maintain a book of accounts for each and every transaction and you have to submit a quarterly basis the books of account to your registered office right so these are two illustrations abc limited has its registered office at delhi and branch office in california the book of accounts relating to transaction affected at branch office are kept at of that office and proper summarized returns periodically are sent to that branch office or at registered address so same way this is the illustration you can read where any other financial information maintained outside india is required by director the director shall furnish a request to the company setting out the full details of the financial information which is out and the period for which the financial information is out so whenever the director is asking for financial information of a 
uh, which is maintained outside India, he can make such a request with giving a proper justification. The period for which, for what period the financial information is required. The company shall produce such financial information within how many days? 15 days from the date of the written request. So within 15 days, you have to submit the financial request. The financial information required shall be sought by the director himself, not by through a holder of attorney. This is about the financial information. Next is preservation. Now this books of accounts shall be kept in good order, not less than how many years? Eight years. Immediately preceding the financial year or the company had an existence for period less than eight years, then all preceding years you have to maintain a book of account. However, where an investigation has been ordered in respect of the company, the CG may direct the book of account may be kept for such longer years. So this book of account needs to be preserved for how many years? Eight years. Now who are the persons who are responsible to maintain the book of account? The following persons are responsible for maintaining the book of account. Say your MD, whole time director, CFO and any other person or the company, uh, person of the company which are charged by the uh, board with complying with the provisions. Next comes section number 129 financial statements so financial statement they have given a chart example is balance sheet income statement cash flow statement and a p and l statement so financial statement shall give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company or companies with the form uh, which is provided in the different class so insurance company banking company or companies which are engaged in generation supply of electricity shall make a financial statement in the form as may be specified these financial statement will be laid, laid down in the agm of that financial year agm who who are their agm shareholders in that meeting in annual general meeting you have to present your financial statement <coughs> Next is financial statement. It is the word financial statement must give true and fair view. Now what exactly it means financial statement true and fair view. The second uh, before that you just write down here. These are important persons responsible. For preservation of book and account, CFO, manager, MD, any other person. And write down period for maintenance. of book and account it is 80 days please write down
what is the period for maintenance of book of accounts? It is for eight years. Yes. Hmm. So section one hundred twenty-eight again and again this phrase is coming true and fair view. What is it? Every financial statement must give true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company at the end of the financial year. So what is true and fair view? It means financial statements should comply with accounting standards accounting standards which are prescribed in section 133 of the companies act then it should be it should be in the form as what as provided in different as in schedule 3 so schedule 3 and section 133 it should be accordance with them so in case of financial statements of any insurance banking or any company engaged in electricity for which a company or financial statement has been specified shall not be treated as not disclosing a true and fair view merely by reason of the fact that did not disclose that any matter which are not required to be disclosed any banking company matters which are not required and in which any matters which are not required to be disclosed by electricity and in case of company governed by any other law any matter which are not so those matter which do not required to be disclosed so it does not mean that this this uh, this um, particular company has not given what the financial statements in the true and fair view manner so these are the point accounting standards section 133 and schedule 3 so where the financial statement do not comply with accounting standards the company shall disclose in its financial statement a deviation from their accounting standard the reasons and the financial impact at every agm the bod shall lay before the meeting financial statement for that particular year so completely it is written that persons who are responsible to take the reasonable steps to secure the compliance by the company with the requirement are cfo whole time director managing director and other person which board has decided so this is just required to the penalties not important now what are the form of financial statement schedule 3 we have read it should be a schedule 3 describes the general instruction for preparation of p&l and balance sheet what are the consolidated financial statement consolidated financial statement i'll tell you if your company is a holding company and you have two or more subsidiary companies your financial statements will be consolidated with those companies as well means whenever you uh, as a parent company is individually you you are giving your own financial statement that is your financial statement will be known as your stand alone financial statement and if you are giving the financial statement along with your subsidiary financial it will be known as your what consolidated financial statement please draw a table in your notes types of financial statements first comes stand alone financial statements and the second one is consolidated financial statements so consolidated financial statement in case company is having subsidiaries stand alone financial statement only in case company do not have subsidiaries two cases are there yes 
so <clears throat> so companies act has made a preparation for consolidated accounts mandatory for all companies and private companies which have more or one or more subsidiaries so subsidiary financial parent financial will equal to your consolidated financial statements yes so where a company has one or more subsidiary it shall in addition to its financial your own financial statement apart from this you will prepare a console financial statement of the company of all the subsidiaries company in such manner as may be prescribed which shall also be laid before the agm along with laying its financial statement so along with own your own financial statement you will lay down your console financial statements also the company shall also attach along with financial statement a sap separate statement so along with the financial statement you will also attach a separate statement containing the silent features of the financial statement of subsidiaries associate in aoc 1 so aoc 1 is the form where the silent features silent features of your subsidiaries are attached in this statement write down yes so abc international <clears throat> was having 50 lakh of income and 30 lakh of the assets mentioned in the financial statement it is not correct to just reveal the parent company financial when its consol income states 55 million and governs 85 million of assets so parent company is all should always maintain a consolidated financial statement parent means an enterprise which has more than one subsidiaries so this is how it is then is manner of now how you will console the accounts there is written manner of consolidation consolidation of financial statement shall be made in accordance with which schedule schedule 3 yes so section 129 of the act in case the company governed in section 21 will not require to make the console financial it shall it shall be sufficient if the company complies with the provisions of schedule 3 so nothing in this rule shall apply in respect of preparation of the console financial statement by a company if it meets the following condition what is it if it is a company whose securities are not listed or are not in process or not in the process of getting listed in india or its ultimate or any intermediary holding company files consoled with a registrar which are applicable and consolidated accounting standards it is a wholly subsidiary company and all its members including those not drawn required to vote have been intimated in writing for which the proof or delivery is available nothing is there simply said according to schedule 3 the financial statements need to be profiled next is periodical financial statement the cg may require the class of the unlisted company to prepare the financial results on periodical basis to obtain approval of bod and complete the audit or limited review of the periodical financial results so as per central Go central government can give a direction to such companies to maintain the financial results on the periodical basis file a copy with the roc within 30 days of completion of relevant period with which fees may be prescribed next is what is the manner of reopening of the accounts on the courts of tribunals order when when in which situation you can reopen your accounts specified in section 130 So section 130 provides the provision for regarding the reopening of a account accordingly a company shall not reopen the accounts unless an application to the tribunal or a competent jurisdiction in this regard is made by one or more cg gives an application to a tribunal income tax authorities give securities and exchange board of india gave the regulatory body or authority or person any order in this regard made by the court so the reopening and recasting is permitted in the following case, cases when the earlier accounts were prepared in 
fraudulent manner or affairs were mismanaged. The tribunal shall give notice to CG, income tax, SEBI or regulatory authority. The accounts so revised under this section shall be final. So only on application of these authorities to tribunal the accounts can be reopened. No order shall in respect of reopening relating to the period earlier than 8 financial year immediately preceding the current financial year. So the order shall not be made no order shall be made in respect of reopening the accounts relating to the period earlier than 8 up to 8 financial year only the order can be made. Provided that a direction has been issued by CG for keeping the account book of accounts for longer than 8 years the book of account may be reopened for more than 8 years because see book of accounts limit to preserve is 8 years how can you ask the company to reopen the accounts for earlier than 8 years yes next is what is the manner for re voluntary revision suppose you want to voluntarily revise your book of financial statements or your board's report then what is the provision it is section number 131 so 130 is your reopening 129 that we have already studied regarding to <coughs> schedule 3 also that was relating to financial statement 129 130 is regarding the simply the uh, this thing periodical financial statements reopening and then after 130 comes the voluntary revision so 131 allows the directors to prepare a revised financial statement or revised board report in respect of any of the three preceding financial year after obtaining the approval of tribunal if it appears to them that the company's financial statement has not complied suppose you will obtain the tribunal approval in this case tribunal shall give a notice to the cg and income tax authority and take into consideration if any may representations made by government or authority before passing the now trust tribunal when you have given application to tribunal yes we want to voluntarily revise our accounts in that case the uh, this tribunal will give an application to the cg such a revised financial statement shall not be prepared or filed for more than once in a financial year only in once in financial year revision is allowed the detailed reason for revision shall be disclosed in the board report in the relevant financial year in which the revision in board. So when the revision is made, you will disclose it in the board report in that financial year where you have revised the financial statements. Where the copies of previous financial statement or report have been made, sent to the members or delivered to the register, the revision must be confined to correction or making of necessary alteration. So this is about your financial statements, how it can be voluntarily revised by making an application to the tribunal. Next is who will sign the financial statement. In that case, the signature shall be, financial statement shall be approved by the board before they are signed on behalf of the board by whom chairperson of the company where is authorized or by two directors out of which one will be MD and if any and CFO and CFO and CS of the company where they are appointed in case of one person. So where CFO and CS are appointed, they will also sign. Yes. So the audit report shall be attached to every financial statement. A report by the BOD shall also be attached to the statement laid before in the general meeting. Yes. <coughs> So, board's report will be attached and auditor report. Write it in your notes also. Here. Plus audit report. Yes. I will show you one of uh, the financial statement. Uh, it is available online wait
it we can open mlc See when you see the annual report of Reliance Industries. Wait a second. Just a second. Let me go to the index first. There is a Reliance report, and it will not be less than pages after all. Here we have opened a report which is relating to your reliance industry. Yes. See, now what is there? Standalone financials here. Then I hope you can see consolidated financials. So in consolidated and standalone is what your Wait, just a second. Okay, it is independent auditor report, balance sheet, statement of P and L, and changes in equity and cash flow. We have we have also studied same. This is the independent auditor report that is also given along with the your financial statements. So this is about the auditor auditor reports opinion. Right, and then after that, they have what they have followed is the balance sheet. This is how the balance sheet of the RIL looks like. Reliance Industries Limited look like, and then after that is the cash flow statement, followed by some notes to cash flow statements. You will give a justification of the items that are covered in the cash flow statement. This is how the fin financials look like. Yes. Okay, so is it mandatory to sign the financial statement from the company secretary? So a company in which whole time CS is appointed, then it is mandated that the financial statement is signed from the whole time CS. Further, if the company appointed CE or CFO, then financial statement shall also be signed by them. Clear? So right of the member. Now, right of the members to the copies of the audited financial statement. Now, members they have the right to get the 
copies so copy of the financial statement including the consolidated financial statement audit report with every other document required shall be annexed to the financial statement which are laid before the companies in its general meeting it shall be sent to every member of the company every trustee and other persons who are entitled not less than 21 days before the date of the meeting so when your agm is to scheduled in the month of september says before your agm day 21 days before you have to give the financial statements to your members the copies of the document shall be sent not less than less than 21 days from the date of the meeting shall be deemed to have duly sent if it is so agreed by the company that the, if the company not having share capital not less than 95 percent people are saying yes in case the uh, company having majority of the number entitled to vote and represent not less than 95 percent of the paid up share capital it shall be deemed to have been sent to them next is the obligation of a listed company in case of the company whose shares are listed on recognized stock exchange the copies of the documents are available for inspection during the business hour for a period of 21 days before the meeting and the statement showing the silent features in aoc3 or the copies of the document shall be sent to the member not less than 21 uh, days before the date of the meeting what is the manner for circulation of the financial statement is the next question by electronical mode in the dmat form or dispatch of the physical copies it can be given so every listed company is also required to place in its financial statement all of the document which are uh, attached there to on its website According to SEBI LODR, listed companies shall give prior intimation to stock exchange about the meeting of the board of directors regarding financial statement. So what happened is whenever the meeting is to be conducted, the board of directors meeting is to conduct in case of the listed companies, you have to give a prior intimation to the stock exchanges. So this intimation will be given at least five days in advance, uh, excluding and such intimation shall include the date of the meeting of the board of director. Every listed company having subsidies shall place a separate account for its subsidies also. A listed company which has a subsidy outside India, the provisions are different. So for a listed company, whenever the board meeting is conducted to discuss the financial statement five days before you have to intimate to the stock exchanges and the date of the board meeting is included in this five days. Next is financial statements of the subsidiaries. Financial statements of the subsidiaries, every company having a subsidiaries shall provide a separate audited financial statements as may be prescribed. Right to inspect, every company shall have an obligation to allow every member or the holder to inspect the financial statement. Simply, at least 21 days before the date of meeting, you should give a right to the members. So, what is the copy of the financial statement? I told you the form is AOC4 that will be filed with the registrar. So, every company to file the financial statement including consolidated in AOC4 or AOC CFS with the ROC. CFS is if your accounts are consolidated in that case the form is AOC 4 CFS you will write down here in case of consolidated accounts how many days this form needs to be filed within 30 days from the day on which AGM held and adopted the financial statement right if the financial statement are not adopted, suppose the financial statement are not adopted in the AGM or the adjourned AGM, when your AGM date is adjourned to next date, then such unadopted financial statement shall be filed with ROC within the 30 days from the date of AGM. Write on in your notes, when this is filed, AOC 4, within 30 days, of conducting AGM.
okay then after that comes next part is roc shall take them in record as provisional until the adoption at c ab if your if your financials these are not adopted in that case it till it is adopted in the agm next agm which is adjourned adm in that case till then it is adopted it will be known as the provisional financial statement this is next the second so the financial statement adopted in the adjourned agm shall be filed with the registrar within 30 days from the date of such adjourned annual general meeting same as that the company shall attach the accounts of subsidiaries incorporated outside india which have not established their place of business in india with the financial statement with its own financial statement the accounts of your subsidiaries will also be attached provided that in case of subsidiary which are incorporated outside india which is not required to get its financial statement audited under any law of the country of its incorporation and which it does not get such financial statement audited the requirement shall be met if the holding indian company files the unaudited financial statement along with the declaration and where such financial statement in the language other than english along with the translation so for the subsidiaries also the financial statement will be annexed where the agm of the company for any year it has not been held suppose your company agm has not held the financial statement along with the documents required duly signed with the statement of facts and the reasons not holding the agm shall be filed with the roc within 30 days from the last date before the agm should have been held so if suppose your agm has not been held by the company you will give a declaration along with the facts and the reasons why you are company has not held the agm to the registrar within 30 days at the end of the day to which the agm should be held and the last date when the agm should be held with, uh, is 30th september right the class uh, so rule number 3 of the companies is filing of documents and forms in xbrl following company shall file the financial statement in aoc for xbrl so aoc for this is an xbrl form that uh, listed companies has to actually uh, give aoc for xbrl pen is not working bear with me okay so another form is aoc4 xbrl so write down here only aoc4 xbrl in case of listed companies the companies which are listed in the stock exchanges okay so one thing is here opc companies one person company shall file the copy of the financial statements by its member within the period of how many days 180 days from the closure of the financial year for them it is 180 days yes so to which companies aoc for xbrl implies the companies listed in stock exchanges companies having the paid of share capital of 5 cr or above 
टर्न ओवर ऑफ हंड्रेड सी आर और अब और ऑल कंपनी विच आर रिक्वायर्ड टू बी फाइल्ड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इन अकॉर्डेंस विद इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड रूल्स 2015 यस सो व्हेन योर कंपनी इज हैविंग द पेड अप शेयर कैपिटल ऑफ 5 सीआर और अबव 100 सीआर और अबव इज योर टर्नओवर और व्हेन योर कंपनी इज लिस्टेड इन एनी ऑफ द स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस और योर कंपनी इज फॉलोइंग द इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड्स 2015 फॉर फाइलिंग द फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एंड इन दैट केस यू विल फॉलो द एओसी फॉर एक्सबीआरएल ओनली यस so for nbfc's housing companies and companies engaged in the business of banking are exempted from filing the financial statement under the rules this is a penalty simple next comes the nafra that is national financial reporting authority uh before beginning with this i would like to jump to a important tap topic wait hmm. so this is the auditor section wait which is very very important please uh, coming to the uh, before covering the nafra let us go to this topic first then we'll conclude with nafra okay begin with please jump to this topic which is called auditors appointment resignation and procedure relating to the appointment qualification and disqualification who is an auditor auditor is a person who is authorized to review and verify your financial recalls and that financial statement present to and fair value the auditor protects the business from the fraud or discrepancies in the accounting methods and on occasion work helps organization to spot out the operational efficiency what is the appointment of auditor section section 139 deals with the appointment of auditor how the auditor of your company is appointed the board of the directors shall appoint an individual or firm so both the individual or you can say a firm can be your first auditor of the company other than the government company within how many days 30 days from the date of registration of the company in case of the failure of the board to appoint it shall inform the members of the company who shall within 90 days at agm appoint the auditor who shall hold office till the conclusion of the first agm of the company so this is about the first auditor first auditor is appointed by the board of director within 30 days when your company is incorporated if suppose board of directors they cannot appoint then give the right to the members of the company who shall appoint within 90 days of the registration of the company and this first auditor will hold the office it will hold the office till the till the conclusion of the first agm of your company because this is the first auditor at the time of registration he shall hold the office till first agm every company shall first agm appoint an individual or the firm as an auditor who shall hold the office till the conclusion till the conclusion of that meeting till the conclusion of the sixth agm and thereafter till the conclusion so whenever your first auditor is now appointed till first agm after that at first agm you will appoint an auditor who can be the individual or the firm who will hold the office till the sixth agm of your company if at any agm no auditor is appointed the existing auditor shall continue to be the auditor of the company i hope this is clear first auditor this is the case of the first auditor manner and procedure for selection and appointment of the auditor in a case a company that is required to constitute an audit committee suppose your company is having audit committee which is prescribed under section 177 the committee 
and where this committee is not required to be constituted, the board shall take into consideration the qualification experience proposed to be considered for appointment and auditor and whether such qualification commensurate with the requirements of the company. So suppose there is an audit committee in your company which is which is required to be formed under section 177. In this particular case, your audit committee shall see the qualifications and the uh, the qualification and experience of the auditor which is proposed to be appointed, it matches with your requirements. While considering the appointment of auditor, the audit committee and board, what they will consider? Any pending proceeding against relating to professional matters of conduct against the proposed auditor with before the ICAI or competent authority. ICAI is the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. If any case is pending with them, then why they will appoint an auditor? Where the company is required to constitute audit committee, the committee shall recommend the name of the individual as an auditor for consideration and case board shall consider and in other cases board shall recommend an individual as or firm as an auditor. If the board agrees with the recommendation of audit committee, it shall further recommend the appointment of audit auditors to the board, to the members in AGM. Otherwise, it shall uh, refer back the recommendation to the committee for reconsideration citing the reasons of the disagreement. Suppose board, if suppose board has whatever audit committee has recommended the board, board also agrees with the same. Then it will further give a notice. It will further give that recommendation to your members in the general meeting. And if suppose the board disagrees with the decision of the audit committee, then audit committee have to reconsider the decision. Thereafter, if the audit committee decides not to reconsider its original recommendation, then the board shall recall the reason for the disagreement with audit committee and send its own recommendation for consideration of the members in AGN. If board agrees with the recommendation, it shall place the matter for consideration in AGM. So there may be two cases that suppose the board agrees with what audit committee has recommended the name. In that case, they will obviously give the name to the members in AGM. If suppose board does not agrees and it will state the reason why it disagrees with the decision of the audit committee. The auditor appointed in the AGM meeting shall hold the hold office from the conclusion of that meeting till the conclusion of 6th AGM with the meeting wherein such appointment is made clear. So what is the tenure of this director, uh, this uh, auditor is from the conclusion of the meeting till this 6th annual general meeting. Now, what are the conditions and appointment and notice to the registrar? See, it says written consent needs to be obtained from the auditor before appointment. Auditor appointed shall submit a certificate that his individual or firm is eligible for appointment and it is not disqualified by Institute of Chartered Accountant. The proposed appointment is as per the term. The proposed appointment is within the limits and list of proceeding against the auditor also needs to be given in that particular certificate. Now, the company shall inform the auditor concerned of his appointment and file a notice of appointment with registrar in ADT 1. So, this is the form. When your auditor is appointed, you will submit to a registrar a form which is ADT 1 within 15 days of the meeting in which auditor is appointed. Then appointment of auditor in case of the government company. In case of the government company, what happens is government companies, the first auditor shall be appointed by CAG within how many days? 60 days from the date of the incorporation. Normally it is 30 days we have studied. For government company it is 60 days. Who will appoint? CAG that is Comptroller and Auditor General of India. In case of failure, if suppose CAG cannot appoint, in that case board will appoint within how many days? Next 30 days. And if board also fails, then within how many days members will appoint? Within 60 days. At EGM, who will hold the office till the conclusion of first annual general meeting? Normally, except the government company, the period for appointment is 30 days. In the government company, CAG will appoint within 60 days. If it fails to appoint, then BOD will appoint within 30 days. If board also fails to appoint, then members will appoint within 60 days. Clear? Then, for subsequent auditor, 
this was relating to the first auditor for every subsequent auditor the cag shall appoint within period of how many days 180 days from the commencement of the financial year an auditor will hold the position till the conclusion of the annual general meeting next is mandatory uh, mandatory rotation of the auditors so there share, there should be <clears throat> rotation of the auditor which is very very which is very very important which is applicable to which companies listed company unlisted public company private company or company having paid up share capital mentioned in what here all unlisted public company 10 crore or more private limited company 50 crore or more or deposits from banks are of rupees 50 crore more in this case when your company is striking these limits you will rotate your auditor concept of rotation shall not apply to opc and the small companies all the companies shall not appoint or reappoint an individual as an auditor for more than one term of five consecutive years so five years uh, appointment of an auditor needs to be maintained not more than that individual auditor who has completed his term of five years shall not be eligible for reappointment in the same company for five years so five years is the maximum years he has to serve all the companies mentioned above shall not appoint or reappoint an audit firm as an auditor for more than what two terms of five consecutive years so for individual it is written individual five consecutive years and for firms it is written two terms so two terms of five consecutive years means 10 years yes an audit firm which has completed its two terms of five consecutive shall not be eligible for reappointment in the same company so very very important is the rotation of the auditor so all listed companies all unlisted public companies having the paid up share capital of 10 cr or more all the private limited companies having the paid up share capital of 50 cr or more or where the company has taken loan from any of the financial state uh, financial institutions of 50 crore or more this rotation of the auditor concept is what for individual it is consecutive term should be five years for firm it is consecutive two terms of five uh, years will be there yes for example as on the date of appointment no audit firm having a common partner or partners to the audit firm whose tenure has expired immediately proceeding shall be appointed as an auditor for a period of five years so this is about the rotation of your auditor yes hmm. The right of the company to remove the auditor or right of the auditor to resign from the office is not affected by this subsection. So this is all about the rotation, mandatory rotation of the auditor. So rotation of the auditors can provide the passing the resolution if the audit firm appointed by is the auditing partner shall be rotated at such term. So this will be followed by a rota uh, simple a resolution. Yes. Okay. Next case is the rotation of the auditors on expiry of their term. Suppose this is the case where your auditor needs to be rotated on expiry of his term, term period, maybe of five years or two consecutive term of five years. What will happen in this case? Same procedure will be followed as required for appointment of auditor. The audit committee shall recommend to the board the name of the individual auditor or the audit firm uh, who may place the incumbent auditor for expiry or where the company is required to constitute an audit committee the board shall consider the recommendation of the committee and simply recommendation will be made for the next auditor reappointment of the retiring auditor now you want to reappoint the auditor who has been retired by his tenure what is the case in this at any annual general meeting a retiring auditor shall be reappointed as an auditor except except in the following circumstances when he cannot be reappointed when he is not qualified for what reappointment or he has given a company notice of his unwillingness i don't want to work anymore or a special resolution has not been passed at 
at that meeting appointing somebody else instead of him has not been passed at that meeting appointing somebody else instead of providing explicit training period shall not be reappointed so these are the three cases where reappointment of audit a retiring partner follows now comes very very important case is the casual vacancy in case of the office of the auditor casual vacancy can occur in some of the circumstances for example <coughs> resignation okay or death illness what will happen in case of the casual vacancies <clears throat> please write on this casual vacancy so the provision for filing filling the casual vacancies are as follows the board shall give uh, have the power to fill the casual vac the vacancy of the auditor within how many days 30 days in case casual vacancy has occurred due to resignation of the auditor such auditor shall also be approved by the company in general meeting convened within 3 months of the recommendation of the board and shall hold the that or an auditor shall hold to the conclusion of next stage now if the resignation if the auditor has resigned in that case it the this appointment shall also be approved by the company in the general meeting within how many months 3 months now in case the company whose accounts are subject to audit by cag controller auditor general of india such vacancy will be filled by cag within 30 days in case cag does not fill the vacancy the bod will fill in 30 days so simply if your accounts in case of the government company it will be filled by 30 days by cag or if cag does not do the same and then bod has the power to appoint the auditor in case of casual vacancy appointment of auditor to fill the casual vacancy shall take into account the recommendation of the audit committee now if suppose any auditor audit committee your company has formed an audit committee in that case you will take their recommendation also now this by summary chart they have given you a good summary chart is there suppose first is appointment of first auditor after the incorporation if your company is a non government company by board 30 days or by members within 90 days first auditor shall hold office at the conclusion of first agm when your company is listed by board 30 days members in agm 90 days same if it is by cag within how many days 60 days from the date of registration in case cag does not appoint then board within 30 days will appoint so in case failure of board is also there then it should be within the period member at egm within 60 days so 60 30 60 here it is 60 30 and 60 here it is 30 and 90 30 and 90 then after that subsequent auditor so by members who shall hold office in the conclusion of the 6th agm by members for maximum one period that is 5 or 10 consecutive years cooling period of 5 years before the next reappointment is given yes so by cag within how many days within 30 days from 1st april this is about the subsequent auditor where written consent for or and certificate is also appointed by the auditor then is casual vacancy if it is due to resignation and other reason it needs to be approved by members within 3 months of recommendation of board and hold the office till next agm board within 30 days 
Here also same three months from the recommendation of and hold till next AGM. Buy CAG within 30 days and board within next 30 days. So here it is 30 and 30. Here it is three months and 30. Here also three months and 30. Yes. This is how your table has been followed. Yes. So by members it is in case of resignation. This was also in case of resignation. Three months case, okay. So within 30 days board here we have written it is other than resignation. Here also right other than X resignation. Clear? These days you have to remember and uh, there is no short shortcut for this that you can skip this portion. This is very important question for portion for examination point of view. Hmm. Clear? So, 30. So, for first auditor it is 30 and 90 days. Yes. Next it is 30, 90 days. But in case of government company it is 60, 30, 60. 60 for CAG then is for board by 30 days and then is 60 for uh, EGM. In EGM. Subsequent auditor same is it. Simple to hold till the conclusion 5 the five period, five term or ten consecutive years. Yes. By CAG, it is how many days? 180 days. Now casual vacancy. Three months if in case of a resignation is to be approved by members. Now normally if is there without resignation is there then other than uh, simply board members will do within 30 days. For CAG it is 30 days needs to be done and board within 30 days if CAG fails. So, in this case, two illustrations are there. Mr. A is appointed as, on, as an auditor of MS XYZ Limited, it is a non-government company on 1st of January 2021. Casual vacancies is done on resignation on 1st of August. So, three months you can calculate September. <coughs> Casual vacancies shall be filed till September 30 days. Same is not approved within three months of recommendation of the board in case of a resignation. Next is in case of government company. Now Mr. A is appointed as an auditor of X limited government company on 1st of January. Casual vacancies cause you to resignation. In that case what will happen 30 days CAG will appoint. So August, September they will appoint. Please write down this days and then we can start next.
appointment of an auditor other than the retiring auditor by special notice special notice shall be required from the members proposing to move a resolution at a next agm to appoint a person other than the retiring auditor or to provide it retiring auditor shall not be reappointed so a special notice needs to be required from all the members that yes retiring part, uh, auditor will not be reappointed in this particular case special notice shall not be required in case where the retiring part uh, auditor has completed a consecutive tenure of 5 years or 10 years following points are relevant for special notice company on receipt of special notice for removing auditor should forthwith send a copy of the same to the retiring auditor simply <clears throat> that uh, it is simple that uh, a receipt of sp uh, special notice needs to be sent to the retiring auditor if the auditor makes a representation in writing to the company and request for its notification the company shall state the representation in any notice send a copy of representation to the members to notice is sent if the copy of representation is not so sent copy thereof shall be filed with roc representation should be a reasonable length and not too long for circulation to members it should not be received by the company too late auditor may require the company to read out the representation in the meeting if it is not so notified to the members because it was too late because of the company's fault so this representation needs to be done special notice will be required in case the retiring auditor shall not be reappointed and in this case if is not reappointed this retiring partner will give a representation to the uh, company whereby the company will read this representation in the meeting next is provided if the tribunal is satisfied on an application either by the company or any of the aggrieved person that the rights are being abused by the auditors then the copy of representation may not be sent and representation shall not be read out see if this supposingly if the rights are being abused then representation will not be read out in the board meeting now what is the power of tribunal the nclt can either sue moto or an application by cg or any other person concerned can direct the company to change the order auditor if it is satisfied that auditor has directly or indirectly acted in fraudulent manner he has abetted or is colluded or fraud in relation to the company director for example the auditor has fraud is fraudulently doing the companies uh, checking the company's accounts or he is abetting the company's accounts in that case the or uh, tribunal on sue moto or an application by cg or an application by any person they may remove this auditor in the case of application made by central government and nclt being satisfied that change of auditor is required it shall within 15 days of the receipt shall make an auditor an auditor shall not function as an auditor and cg may appoint another auditor in his place so now within 15 days this order will be given by nclt this will happen only when the application is made by cg and not other person only when the application is made by cg the order needs to be given within 15 days where the auditor whether individual or firm against whom the final order is passed by nclt he shall not be eligible to be appointed as an auditor for a period of how many years 5 years from the date of passing of the auditor further auditor shall also be liable for an action against 447 we have studied about that was relating to fraud so fraud first is he will be at this two cases will be there first he will not be appointed not appointed for 5 years and second case will be section 447 will be applicable ha so now if suppose your firm is there as an auditor in this case the liability shall be of the firm and every partner acted in fraudulent manner will be liable and shall not be eligible for period of 5 uh, years for appointment clear next is removal of an auditor this is the cases when the powers of tribunal is used next is removal of an auditor 
Now auditor which is appointed as per section 139 can be removed before the expiry of his term only by special resolution and after obtaining the approval of CG. So both of it are required. Here the auditor appointed may be removed by obtaining prior approval of CG. What is the form? ADT 2 is the form for removal within 30 days of the resolution passed by the board. So you will obtain a prior approval of the CG by filing ADT 2. The company shall hold the AGM within 60 days of receipt of the approval of the CG after pass for passing the special resolution. Now when you have received uh, within 60 days when you have received the approval from CG within 60 days of receiving that order or approval from CG you will uh, you will simply you will pass a special resolution in the general meeting. Auditor concern shall be given reasonable opportunity of being heard. So three cases prior approval of the central government is required by filing ADT 2 within how many days? 30 days of passing the board meeting. Then after that 60 days of receipt of the approval you will pass a special resolution in the general meeting. This is how about, how about this <coughs> case. Okay. Next about is resignation. First form was ADT 1. Second form we have studied about removal ADT 2. Then it is resignation is ADT 3. So the auditor who was resigned from the company shall file a statement called ADT 3 stating the reasons relevant for resignation in case which company is other than government company auditor shall within 30 days from resignation file a statement to the company and register if in case of government company it shall file 30 days from the date of a statement to the company registrar and CAG why because government company this is about the uh, form of the resignation ADT 3 is resignation ADT 2 is of removal how it will be removed by special resolution and also approval of the central government. Second comes is the remuneration of the auditor. Remuneration of the auditor shall be fixed in the general meeting or as determined therein. Board may fix remuneration of the first auditor. The remuneration shall be in addition to out of the expenses incurred by the auditor in connection with audit but does not include remuneration paid to him for the service at the request of the company. Very very important is this part section number 144 auditor shall not render certain services. There are certain services that cannot be rendered by the auditor. What are these services? Accounting and bookkeeping services, internal audits, actuarial services, investment advisory services, investment banking services, rendering of outside finance services, management services, any kind of services design implementation of FIS that is financial information system. These services auditor cannot perform as an auditor in a company. What are these? Management services, investment banking, investment advisory services, outside financial services or actual services, internal audit services, accounting or bookkeeping services or design and implementation of the financial information system. Now what is the eligibility and qualification of an auditor? He should be that particular person should be, he should majority of the partner should be a practicing chartered accountant. They are, they should be from Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Now comes what are the disqualification of the auditor? <clears throat> See following person shall not be eligible for appointment an auditor who a body cooperate is not appoint, uh, needs, can be appointed except LLP. Then come an officer or employee cannot be appointed as an auditor. Person who is partner or in the employment of officer or employee of the company. Who, a person who himself or relative is holding any security or interest of the company. These people cannot be appointed as an auditor. A person or the firm who directly or indirectly has business relationship with the companies holding or subsidiary company. In this case, person whose relative is a director or employment of the company as a director. Relative is also there or he is himself a rel uh, relative is employment of the company, director or KMP. 
person is in full employment elsewhere as a person or holding a appointment as an audit person who has been convicted by court of offence then a person who directly or renders services as referred in section 144 the services which are prohibited to be rendered these all things are for disqualifications so this is about your disqualification yes so who body corporate except llp officer employee relatives is officer or employee partner who is in employment or officer or employee of the company then who is in full employment elsewhere who has been convicted by the court of offence then who directly or indirectly renders the services referred under section 144 that we have read yes next is <clears throat> according where the person appointed as an auditor incurs any of the disqualification after his appointment he shall vacate his officer office as such auditor and such vacation shall be deemed to be casual vacancy yes for example there are illustrations of disqualifications that they have rendered a registered society society cannot be appointed arun who is employee of so and so cannot be appointed sanjay is an employee and mr ashish is his partner mrs ashish can, cannot be appointed mr sagar is holding an interest nhs limited so interest is there then also no appointed then holding an interest simple auditor auditor for 20 companies and also audited appointed as an auditor of this appointment is not valid he shall vacate his office because he is doing audit for 20 companies mr rahul was an auditor of two company was convicted then also it will conviction due to conviction he is not appointed then what are the rights and liabilities of the auditor the rights and liabilities of the auditor is prescribed in section 146 the notices of general meeting shall be forwarded to the auditor he should attend the general meeting by himself or authorized representative in this general meeting he has a right to heard in the meeting what are the powers and duties every auditor can access at all time the book of accounts vouchers and information now it is his duty to report the inquiries made by the auditor for example he should make a proper inquiry for the matters and if he is satisfied it is not required necessary to disclose this fact in the report so what is his duties loan and advances he has to disclose which are made by the company transactions represented by the book entry sale of investment he should inquire loan and advances shown as the deposits charging of person expenses to revenue expense like whether Person expense have been charged to revenue. He has to inquire allotment of shares. He is to know whether cash has been actually been received in respect of the shares which are allotted. So these are the verification he has to do. What are loan and advances which is made by the company? Their transactions which are represented by the book entries or sale of investments by the companies. Loan and advances which is shown as the deposits, allotment of shares for cash. or charging of personal expenses to the revenue uh, expense these are all about how he will inquire these things yes what are the powers of cag in case of the government company in appointment cag needs to be there right cag has a right to conduct a supplementary audit of financial statement and comment upon the audit report within 60 days of the date of receipt upon 60 days they have the right to conduct a supplementary audit within 60 days your audit has been done this is all about your auditors yes hmm. now the audit report shall state to the best of the information and knowledge the said accounts and finances give a true and fair view of the state of affairs p and l cash flow and other matters audit report shall also details details needs to be given that he has sought and obtained all the information and explanations which are necessary he whether in his opinion proper book of accounts have been kept whether the branch audit prepared by the person other than the audit has been sent 
whether the company balance sheet and p and l deal deal dealt with the report are in agreement with the book and accounts whether in his opinion financial statement comply with accounting standards the observation or comments which are adverse effect on functioning whether any director is disqualified any qualification reserve or adverse re remark on the maintenance whether the company has adequate internal financial account with respect to the financial statement so these all things needs to be justified by the audit report in in auditor in his audit report whether in his opinion all the accounting policies have been followed whether in his opinion financial statement comply with the statements these all things needs to be done with the audit report yes this is for reading yes so clear so this is about the auditors next <clears throat> this you can just uh, strike is this off okay so just write down this in your notebook <clears throat> adt1 adt2 adt3 adt2 was removal of auditor adt3 is resignation of auditor and adt1 was relating to notice of appointment to roc within 15 days of appointment clear please write down
सो नेक्स्ट टॉपिक रह डाउन कारो दैट इज कंपनीज ऑडिटर्स रिपोर्ट ऑर्डर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो डीलिंग विद नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज कारो so it will be applicable to all the companies including the foreign companies except banking company insurance section it opc small companies and certain private companies so caro <clears throat> basically the order elaborated on all the matters which are to be included in the audit report what all matters will be there in the audit report was referred under the caro whether the company is maintaining proper records showing details in property physical verification of property details of title deeds revaluation of property details of proceeding against the company physical verification of inventory quarterly results or statements details of investments detail of the payment pertaining to statutory dues details of any default made by the company details of fund raised by the company or details of the fraud done by the company is what you have to write in your caro report to like order auditor has to write in the caro report <clears throat> next about is cost audit this is cost audit so company which is engaged in production processing manufacturing or mining activity so these companies they have to require to maintain particulars relating to material labor other terms of the cost these are known as the cost records in case the central government is of the opinion that is necessary to do so then direct the audit of the cost reco uh, records of the class of the companies which are covered under section 148 and which have net worth of such amount or turnover shall be conducted in the order so here is the cost auditor cost auditor it shall be up, shall within 180 days of the commencement of the financial year you shall appoint a cost auditor so the companies which all companies are there manufacturing processing production and mining activity companies so written consent will be obtained from the cost auditor cost auditor shall submit a certificate that he is eligible, eligible for appointment or then he falls he satisfies the criteria of 141 and list of the proceeding which are pending against him so every cost auditor appointed shall continue in such capacity till p expiry of 180 days of the close of financial year or till submits the cost audit for the financial year which is appointed so 180 days is the period or till he submits the cost audit for the financial year till that period he will be what he will be appointed so every cost auditor who who conducts an audit of the cost records shall submit the cost audit along with the reservations in cra 3 right he shall forward his duly signed reports to the board within a period of 180 days from the closure of the financial year from that date or to which the report has been there where he, where he will write the reservation or qualifications contained every company shall within a period of 30 days on the date of receipt of copy of the cost audit furnish to the central government with the report along with the full and explanation on the reservation in cra 4 in extensible extensible business reporting language this is a language which is relating to this cost audit report which needs to be submitted to cg so cg with the company will furnish to cg this report in cra 4 the company uh, which have got extension for holding the annual journal may file the cra within the extended time now cra 4 and cra 3 write down the forms
cost audit report CRA 3, CRA 4, CG Company Shall submit Report to CG Next come CRA CRA 2 will be a removal. Of cost auditor. Hmm. Cost auditor appointed may be removed before his term through a board resolution after giving the reasonable. CRA 2 is required to be filed to CG. So CG you will inform CG for intimating the appointment of another cost order and relevant board resolution. Casual vacancy, whether due to death, resignation shall be filled by the board within 30 days of occurrence and the company shall inform in CRA 2. So, removal or casual vacancy CRA 2 both. Yes. Next is remuneration. Remuneration will be decided by the board or the audit committee. Simple. So, this is about the forms of cost auditor CRA 2 removal you can write or casual vacancy company to inform cg yes A cost audit report is cra3 then cra4 is company shall submit report to cg Next write down secretarial audit. What is secretarial audit? It is always conducted by PCS that is practicing company secretary. Let's come. So, secretarial audit is a compliance audit. It is a pa part of the total compliance management. What is it? This is a tool for compliance management. How the company is complying? It helps to detect the known compliance and to take the corrective measure. So, it is a simple compliance tool, right? Secretarial audit is a process to check the compliance with the provisions of various law, rules, regulations, recalls by the independent professional to ensure that the company has complied with these requirements. It is a mechanism to maintain the compliance with the laws. So, what section it is? Section 204 deals with secretarial audit. Every listed company or any other company shall affect and next the secretarial audit report given by the PCS along with the board report. So along with the board report, the secretarial audit report will be given. For which companies it is applicable, which is mentioned in section 204, read with rule 9 of companies appointment and remuneration rules 2014. So which section strikes? Section 204 
along with the rule 9 of companies appointment and remuneration of managerial rules personal managerial personal 2014 these two rule and section every listed company every company public limited company having paid up share capital of 50 cr public company having turnover of 250 cr every company having outstanding loans of 100 cr so 100 cr 250 and 50 is the limit so you will annex with the board report a secretary audit report which is given by pcs in which form it is given this report mr3 what is it mr3 now this is about the applicability now next is secretarial audit under sebi regulations so what is the limit first 50 cr 250 cr listed company and 100 cr in case of the borrowing now in case of the listed companies in listed companies also have to form the secretarial compliance report this is just for your knowledge you can just read read okay next is what will be the objects what is the objective of the secretarial audit to check and report the compliances of laws to point out our non compliances and inadequate compliances to protect the interest of various stakeholders that is the customers employees and the society i have told you stakeholders are those which are customers your employers and your society to avoid any unwarranted legal actions and penalties by the uh, this law agencies so once you are compliance once you are compliance in all the regulations of your various act then obviously your legal actions will be what avoided so four things are there compliances of applicable laws non compliances and inadequate compliances you can point it out by this report to protect the interests of various stakeholders and avoid any unwarranted legal actions and penalties next is what is the scope of the now this was the objective what is the scope what will be the scope the companies act see verification of various enactment rules notifications and guidelines the secretarial auditor will do so what will be covered in this companies act and other rules here these events require compliance with the provisions of the act so key areas have been highlighted what you will verify maintenance of registers filing of forms moa meeting of directors secretarial standard directors and kmp disclosures issue of shares transfer dividend deposits borrowing loan investments loans csr loan so all the companies act provisions will be verified under the companies act 2013 by the secretarial auditor other major rules and regulations will be notified depositories act foreign contract regulation act foreign exchange management act will be verified then sebi act will be verified by the <coughs> secretarial auditor other applicable laws include what which shall mean applicable to specific industry for example banks laws for banking industries insurance laws for insurance companies this all will be covered in this yes to examine and report the compliance with secretarial standards we have said secretarial standards are issued by icsi secretarial auditor will make sure the company follow the secretarial standard also then adherence to the board process and compliance mechanism that the company adheres to the what is the board process and the compliance management also so scope of secretarial audit shall include the assessment of adequacy and quality of the board process and compliance management so in preparing the audit report secretarial audit shall consider instances of non-compliance litigation what is the board structure what is the deficiency in the board structure what is the existence and internal control system how the company is maintaining or any other material that have happened any other event incurred or taken in the audit company which may have bearing on the compliances under the laws so these are all things that the secretary auditor has to see what are the instances of non-compliance what are the litigations the company may have impact on the compliance management 
then what are the board structures and what are the efficiency of the board system the meeting efficiency in the board so these all the scope so what is the scope of the uh, audit report companies act and rules then other comes is uh, other major acts and then is the other applicable laws now what is the need of the secretarial audit secretarial audit is a process of independent verification examination of level of compliance of applicable security law what laws compliance is company is doing as per the laws it is the verification by the auditor the audit process is done to ensure timely compliance and eliminate unintended non compliance of the rules and regulations yes action plans of corporate secretary is to be designed to ensure all event compliances are considered secretarial audit is a principle is prevention is better than cure so what is the need effective mechanism to ensure legal and procedural requirements are complied with secretarial audit all the legal and procedural requirement will be complied a level of confidence will be given to the directors and kmp why their companies compliance so confidence will be generated directors can concentrate on important business as secretary audit ensures legal and procedural requirements because compliance is ka verification is done by secretary auditor so automatically directors will concentrate on important business matters strengthen the image and goodwill of the company in, in minds of regulators and stakeholders how how uh, it will strengthen the image of the company why because your company is compliant company the secretary audit is an effective governance and compliance management tool it helps the investor in analyzing the compliance level thereby increase the reputation your reputation will also be increased what is the all the levels confidence effective mechanism for legal requirement then directors can concentrate on important business strengthen the image and goodwill of the company secretarial audit is effective governance of compliance of business and it ensures the investment investors for compliance of various levels now appointment of secretarial it is by means of resolution role of company secretary company secretary role is very very important in this format of secretarial audit this is simple okay so you can just write down in this particular topic objectives are important hmm. this secretary audit will be applicable to which companies write down applicable to following companies all listed companies all companies having paid up share capital pusc is paid up share capital of 50 cr or more all companies having turnover of 250 cr or more then all companies having borrowing of 50 cr or more hundred here it is hundred hundred cr or more all public not private okay all public company and this form for secretary audit is mr 3 okay please write down
the next topic is internal audit Yes, come to the module. Section 138 deals with internal audit. Classes of the companies, which classes of the companies are required for doing the internal audit? For example, we have studied about the secretary audit. Similar way, internal audit is also there. 50, 100, 250 CR companies we have read about the secretary audit. Now what is the limit of the internal audit provision? Listed company or unlisted public company having paid up share capital of 50, turnover of 250, outstanding loan <coughs> of 100 CR. Now deposits will also come here, 25 CR, 100, here turnover is 200, then is 50 CR. 50 200, 100 and this thing. Here in our secretarial audit report, what were the limits? Limits were 50, 250, 100 deposits were not there. Here also the limit is 50, 200, not 250. 200 outstanding loans, 100 and two, uh, 20, uh, 25 is the outstanding loans. Private company having turnover of 200, loans of how much? 100 CR. Yes. So, IFC companies are not required to do the internal audit. Who can be the internal auditor? CA, cost accounting or other professional can be the internal auditor. What is the paid up share capital that we have studied now only? Unlisted public company or listed company? Mandatory to, uh, to do the listed com uh, this thing, this uh, internal audit. Unlisted public company paid up share capital 50, turnover 200, private may paid up share capital not applicable, 200 turnover, outstanding loan 100 CR, outstanding loan 100 CR and here outstanding deposit is 225 and it is not applicable, 50, 200, 100. 25 not applicable 200 100 not applicable yes so appointment of internal order is required for every producer company producer company ke liye there is the provisions this is about your internal audit so please write down the limits internal audit topic listed Paid up share capital. Unlisted public companies. 50 CR. Then turnover. 200 CR. Then loans. 100 CR, then deposits, 25 CR or more. Right? can be, further you can write can be, done by CA, cost auditor, or other professional.
yes please write down this Yes, so this is about the internal audit. So, uh, in this chapter, there are many important topics that I have covered in this class. Maximum of the topics are covered. Now, we have only left with a small topic that will be Nafra, that we will start with the other lecture, next lecture, and we will revise this lecture again. Why? Because this is very important. You can write down here. 5 to 6 marks can come from this. Basically theory. Theory based and the limits questions. Limit questions expect. Case based questions. I will tell you what is it. Case based questions. Limit based like we have studied about the secretarial audit limits. That based that if suppose a company is having a paid up share capital of 25 CR, does this, it, it is applicable to secretary law, it is applicable? No. Why? Because it's limit. So and so limits has been prescribed in a so and so section, read with rule so and so. Therefore, in this applicable case, is not applicable. This is how the questions can come. So basically, NAFRA is uh, only pending in this. Mm. <clears throat> Please open your uh, last section of this module. Write on the question number one, list out the prohibited activities by auditors as prescribed in Companies Act 2013. Second question, write down. Explain the provisions relating to secretarial audit with its objective. Explain the provisions of appointment of first auditor in case of companies including government companies explain the provision of removal and resignation of auditor right yes 
just a second if any question i've left on these topic important topics i'll just see to it write down one more question write a note on signing the financial statements please write down these questions in your book in the next lecture we'll uh, just conclude this uh, chapter by uh, studying that nafra topic which is left and also revising what we have done today okay this chapter is very much important for your examination point of view Quickly come to the index now. Please mark down these important topics. Preservation of books of accounts important. State true and fair view. What is the meaning of this? Very important. Consolidated financial statements important. Reopening and voluntary revision important. Signing is important. Then here auditors all sections very important, including this, this secretary audit report important. That's all. Please write down one more question that we have left. Uh, that is relating to the voluntary revision of financial statement and reopening of the financial statement in your questionnaire that we have referred so we are according to the index we are in this ninth chapter so please write down one more question that i have left uh, Explain voluntary revision of financial statement including inspection of financial statements yes
You have written about secretary audit report, na? <clears throat> Note on secretarial audit report. Please write down these questions. So all the provisions relating to the secretarial audit, cost audit, financial statement signing, financial statement voluntary revisions, appointment of auditor in case of government company, appointment of first auditor, appointment of second subsequent auditor, how you can remove that auditor, how the auditor can be resigned, these all forms are very very much important. So please, whatever we have covered in your uh, handwritten notes, you can, uh, whosoever is have not written, can write down these forms, ADT1, ADT2, ADT3, with respect to auditor, cost auditor is CRA2, CRA3, CRA4. Then we have studied about secretarial audit, that is what MR3 secretarial audit needs to be and applicable to the following companies internal audit also the limits was there applicable this secretary audit is applicable to few of the companies listed company public companies paid up share capital is 50 cr turnover is 250 cr all companies having loans or borrowings of 100 cr or more internal audit all the listed companies public listed unlisted public companies having a paid up share capital of 50 cr or more Turnover here in this case will be 200, not 250, as which is specified in inter in your secretarial audit report. Loans here it is 100 CR. Deposits here is 25 CR or more, which is not applicable in the case of which which is not applicable in the case of the secretarial audit. And it can only be done by the cost chartered accountant or your cost auditor or any other professional so this you please write it down in your notes it's very very important kindly please revise each and everything that we have studied in the lecture and feel free to ask your doubts through the email or whatever is the procedure in Ramesh Academy you can just con contact I hope all your concepts are getting cleared and you are revising all the chapters along with the scanners. Fine.
the limits are very important this is how you will revise 50 250 this is these are this is the trick to revise and learn the limits in your chapters okay fine students thank you so much see you in the next lecture please revise